Why you ever chose me? Oh yeah. Oh hey guys, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a wet Monday here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. Dog gone. It has been coming down already this morning. And I've got the radar pulled up in front of me, and we are about to get a full-on gully washer. I mean, it is coming. It is coming. Matter of fact, as I look at this uh, at this radar right now, I can assure you that our friends down in Mariana, the Allens, when they get on, they're going to tell you right now that they have already started gathering gopher wood because, man, oh, man, it is coming down, rolling at us. It is coming from... It is coming from the southwest. It's kind of sneaking up on us. And so, uh, uh, man, as like I said, as I'm sitting here looking at this, we about in the in the, the green right now. So it's about to start falling here in South Fork City. There is all kinds of yellow. There is some orange in this mess. And so we definitely have some rain that is going to fall in the delta today. But that is okay because God is still on his throne and it doesn't change nothing. And all of God's people said amen to that. Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to the chat this morning. I'm glad that you were with me. It is time to get in, grab your coffee, grab your Bibles, get your journals, and let's just settle in as we kickstart our morning. I do hope that you guys have had a great weekend. We had a awesome day yesterday on the Ridgewood campus. I mean, we had a rip snorter of a day. And so uh, uh, just so blessed to be a part of that. So blessed to be there. Yeah, the spirit was so sweet, man. It's just, it's just good, good stuff. Uh, just so, so blessed to be uh, the, the pastor there at Ridgewood. Guys, come on in and say hello when you get in. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that you're watching. And then please, please do us the honor and let us hit the share button. I cannot stress that, that enough. Every time that you hit the share button, then what you do is you take it out a little farther than what we can. You take the gospel out to your friends and to your family. And so we strongly, strongly encourage you to do that. Come on in, say hello. Uh, matter of fact, I am in the middle of doing that as well. So give me just a couple of moments this morning and let me kind of sneak over and uh, send it out. I put this out on my personal ministry page and then I send it over to my personal page. I want all of my friends. I want all of my family to be able to uh, hear what God has to say to us. And so I want to make sure that I do that. So tell me, how was your weekend? How was your weekend? Anybody do anything uh, kind of fun? Get out. I mean, we had a kind of a, a weather delayed weekend, really, if you just want to know the truth. It was kind of kind of wet, kind of gnarly, but uh, you know, that's, that's okay. God, uh, God is always uh, in control. We're not, not worried about that. Okay. I'm in. There's our friends. There's the Allens. Hey guys, y'all got rain coming down to Mariana this morning. Uh, I mean, the radar says y'all getting popped right now. So, uh, go ahead and, uh, and, uh, uh, tell me, tell me what you guys got going on. Hey, good morning, Ruth. Glad you are in this morning. I hope you've had a good weekend. Mm. More on rainy days. There's something about rainy days and coffee. I don't know what it is. Uh, it just makes the, uh, a rainy day makes my coffee better. And I, I, like I said, I don't know what in the world it is. Um, do, do you feel that way? Uh, you know, there, there's something about a rainy day. I just want to grab a book and grab a coffee by the vat size and just, just pull up and just enjoy the day. I mean, I really do. Tom says it is definitely raining. It sure enough is. It is definitely raining. Like I said, I've got this thing pulled up and it, it uh, yeah, you guys look like y'all are getting smacked right in the mouth. Uh, I've got a very good radar app that's uh, on my device and I'm sorry, it's not on my device. It's on my, uh, it's on my laptop and uh, uh, it was gifted to me. This is one of those sites where you've got to pay to actually be a part of it. And so this was gifted to me that uh, I, I can use it. Uh, my very good buddy of mine knows my passion for weather. And so this is uh, one of those state-of-the-art weather sites. So I love it. Let's see here. Who else is Hey, good morning, Brian. Good morning, good morning, good morning. There's Miss Jessie. Good morning, lady. How are you? How are you this morning? Yeah, yeah, Tommy, you and Arlene, y'all about to get quite a bit. 
Okay, it's it's, uh, it's definitely coming down. Well, West Helena is getting their socks rocked right now. I mean, that stuff's about to cross the river down there, but it is pretty gnarly. Pretty, pretty gnarly. Hi, Mary. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Miss Judy. Good morning, Miss Judy. So glad to see you in church yesterday. So glad to see you. I, I hope that that, uh, uh, that didn't bother you. It didn't hurt you. And I know, guys, did y'all enjoy y'all Sunday school class yesterday? It was so good to have Miss Pat's and Brother Norval's class going back to, uh, you know, going back down the hall. Uh, you know, it's like I told Miss Denise yesterday. I said it was like watching Miss Pat and Brother Norval go back there and all the little ducklings following back. That was just the most glorious thing. I loved it. I loved it. And so, uh, I do hope that uh, that y'all had a great, great Sunday school class. It was a great day. Yes. And you're right. It is still a beautiful day. It really is. You know, as I look out, my, my clover's getting thicker again because I mowed last Sunday and Monday. So I'm a week out now. Oh, the wind's picking up. Yep. Wind's picked up. I think it's about here in South Fork City. So everybody north of me, y'all, it's coming. Um, uh, uh, so my clover's thick, my grass is thickening up, and so by the time I get to it this afternoon, or not this afternoon, but uh, later on this week, it, it's going to be pretty thick. I may actually have to mow the dog, doggone thing twice just because it's uh, it's going to be so thick. Mm. Is there, Mary, good to see all in Sunday school. Yes, yes. We had uh, one of our largest attendance in Sunday school yesterday that we have had in months. It was so good, so good. Mary says, happy birthday, Ruth Hastings. M Ruth, is today your birthday? Today is your birthday. Well, happy birthday to you, Miss Ruth. May your day be so special. I hope you get to do some fun things and spend quality time with your family. So glad that you shared that with me, Miss Barry. There's Debbie Tacker. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, Debbie Tacker. Glad you were here. Hey, guys, I saw something on uh, social media last night. Um, I, I love... TikTok. Uh, I have taken to TikTok. My daughter has. I'm on it. And uh, I do it for ministry purposes only. Uh, and and uh, you get to go through there and uh, and spend some things uh, uh, to share the gospel in a most ungospel world. And so I, I really enjoy doing that. And I get to see some uh, some really interesting things. Let's see, Arlene Allen says, we're praying God will let the rain slow down as Pastor Steve and Christy are moving into the parsonage today in Fort City. That's right, they are. Uh, yeah, that's not going to be a, a dry day for them, uh, unfortunately. So uh, bless their hearts. Woo, they, they've got a rough day to unload a truck. Doggone. Uh, and so one of the things I was watching, and you can see, I mean, you can see 10,000 things of everything on, on TikTok. And they're like one minute max video, 60 seconds is tops. That's all you get. And there was a place in Texas last night. It was a restaurant in Texas and they specialized in cinnamon rolls. Now, if you know me at all, now, you know, I love donuts, but my passion, my favorite pastry of all time is a cinnamon roll. And 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 uh, I, and I'm talking about it, it is it, it is my hands down favorite pastry. And when I worked for uh, the the NEA hospital back a couple of years ago, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the chef would bake cinnamon rolls, and that was part of the breakfast menu. And so you had to be there when the uh, when the cafe opened at at six a.m. Uh, was when they set those cinnamon rolls out. And I mean, these were gigantic. These were massive, and that icing was on there. And I mean, and of course, uh, you know, and I had a, a serious cup of coffee always in my hand at all times. And so it just made for great mornings. We always look forward to Tuesday and Thursday mornings. As a matter of fact, the guy that uh, that uh, I, I uh, uh, teamed with, he was my teammate, um, I, we just couldn't wait to to get our cinnamon rolls on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It was a treat for us. But having said that, last night there's a place on uh, uh, place on TikTok somewhere in Texas, and they were making cinnamon rolls. And folks, I am not exaggerating. It was the size of a hubcap. This joker was this big around. No kidding. I am not kidding at all. And it was like this thick. 
And it was so big that the, 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 the people that were working with them, they would come out of the oven and they would pick them up and they would flip them over with their hands and dip them into icing and then pull back and set them on a to-go uh, uh, container uh, you know that was wrapped. But I'm, I'm not kidding you. This thing was like this big around. And all I could think of was give me a fork, a cup of coffee, and about three of them jokers, and I would be ready to, to just to dive in. I have absolutely not seen anything that size. Miss Judy says, go buy Forest Donuts. They have big ones. They do, but Miss Miss Judy, they are nothing compared to this. I am not exaggerating. These were the size of hubcaps on your car, and, and they were thicker than that. They were They were probably... They're probably eight to ten inches in diameter. I, I it, seriously, yeah, you, you you probably think I'm sitting here yanking y'all's chain on this Monday morning. I'm not. It was huge, and it was every bit of four to five inches thick. And you could just see it just had like like pounds of cinnamon in that thing. And I was like, Lord Jesus, just let me get 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 a bite. Holy smokes, it was so good. Mm. Did you go back for seconds on the cinema note? Now, are you talking about the ones uh, at the hospital? If you are talking about the ones at the hospital, Tommy, there were days we had to go back and get another one. Uh, they went so fast that what we would sometimes do is, uh, my buddy, his name's Dylan. Dylan and I would grab a couple and we'd have one for the morning and then we would leave the other one set aside and we'd have it uh, after lunch. Uh, they were just so good. The shelf was always amazing. And uh, man, oh, man, oh, man, Denise, the cinnamon rolls look sinful so good. Yes, Denise is right. I, I showed those things to Miss Denise last night, and uh, I sent them to my, my son-in-law, uh, and he likes cinnamon rolls almost as much as I do, and I sent it to my, my son-in-law, and he messaged me back this morning. He said, I'll take seven, and that's my boy right there. Uh, man, I, he was just, but no, no kidding. They were just massive, 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 massive. And so uh, I'm sitting here thinking about this and I'm watching it rain and I've got my coffee and I'm like, that is exactly what I need right now is a, is a, uh, uh, a hubcap size cinnamon roll. No, the hubcap version. No, I didn't. I saw it on social media, Tommy. Uh, I didn't get to see it in person. If I'd have saw it in person, y'all would have to come visit me in the hospital because I would have ate myself silly. Um, I really wanted it, but I've said I've saved the video so I can go back and watch it over and over again. So that's probably about as close to that thing as I'm going to get. Mm. Hey, let's read our Bible verse for today. Facing my fears, facing my fears. You know, as we uh, go about our daily lives, we all have different fears, don't we? Uh, some may be fearing this, some may be fearing that, some may be fearing this, but we all face fears of some kind. The thing is is that when, when we read these passages of Scripture about facing our fears, it doesn't matter what the fear is because God conquers all. Amen? We're going to read Psalm chapter 27, verse 1 today in our theme of facing my fear. Psalm 27, verse 1 says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom? Shall I be afraid? Whew. All God's people said, amen, right there, right there. Do not ever, ever, ever allow your fear to conquer you. Do not ever allow your fear to conquer, conquer you. There is no fear that can conquer God. Amen? There is no fear that can conquer God. There is nothing you're going to face today that God can handle. There's nothing you're going to face today or tomorrow that God is not already aware of. Somebody say amen to that. I mean, this is true. The, the, the issues that lie before you are never as great as the God that's inside you. And that's what we got to hold on to. That's exactly what we got to hold on to. Good, good verse this morning. As we dive into our Bible reading, Amen. There we go. Hey, let me talk about. Uh, let's talk about some announcements real quick. Uh, uh, this coming week, we're pretty much online uh, with our regular 
with our regular broadcast schedule. Uh, the uh, morning chats will be here, Lord willing, uh, each day this week at 9 a.m. Dr. Jones will be back tomorrow night at 7 bells. Uh, at 7 o'clock, uh, he started, uh, all the Sunday school classes started their new quarterly materials yesterday. And uh, for uh, uh, Brother Larry's class and for Norval's class, started in the book of Job. Job yesterday. So good, good stuff. And and to be real honest with you, I'm not real sure where the text was that Miss Pat's classes. They use the Masterworks uh, curriculum. And so and I'm just, I just don't know. That is my fault. I don't know what that is. But uh, uh, that is is where we are. That's what's going on. And Brother Larry is going to be here tonight. And he will be uh, talking about the first chapter in the book of Job. And so I'm very much looking forward to sitting in with that with Dr. Jones as he gets in here next Tuesday night, though, guys. Next Tuesday. That'll be the 15th. Yeah, that is the 15th. Okay. We will not be having. We will not be having uh, any uh, morning lives, and we will not be having Doctor Jones that night. Okay, we will not be having our normal set lives, and the reason why is that that is the day that I will be out of town. I'm actually going to be out of state. Uh, I am headed to Nashville, Tennessee. That is uh, the primary day of the National Southern Baptist Convention. And so a group of pastors and I are leaving bright and early next Tuesday morning, headed to Nashville. We are voting for the new president of the SBC, and so we want to be sure that we are there. Uh, So mark your calendars. No coffee chat and no uh, online Sunday school next Tuesday. I will do my best, though. With that bunch of jokers that I'm going to be riding with, which I love these pastors. Man, they're just, they're my buddies. Uh, I, you will probably see me pop in with some uh, spontaneous lives or messages or pictures throughout the day right here on this page. So you want to make sure that you are coming back and refreshing this page. And speaking of, uh, you you really need to make sure that your settings are correct here on this page so that you are receiving all of our posts, all of our pictures, all of our uh, videos we post, and all of our live broadcasts. And it is in your settings. Just go to your your notification settings to make sure that you are getting uh, everything that comes off of the Ridgewood page because you don't want to miss anything. But next Tuesday, like I said, I'll pop in and out through the day and do some things, show some pictures and uh, and all kinds of stuff because I want you to take the journey with me. It's going to be a good day. Um, Right now, there are... Uh, let's see, the last count is there's over 14,000 people registered to come to this thing. And that's one of the highest uh, registered count that we've seen since back in the late 90s. So this is this is going to be a big, big, big time meeting. Miss mm. Deanna, there is no night for in his light we never walk alone. And to that I say, amen and amen. Man, oh man, boy, that's powerful stuff right there. Uh, also tonight, tonight, y'all ready for this? It is our annual associational Bible conference. It is going to be held at the Tri-County Baptist Campground in the Worship Center there. It will start at 6.30 tonight. Uh, if you can go, I strongly, strongly encourage you to make plans to go to that. Find somebody that's going, ride with them. Y'all carpool, make make plans to go. It is open to everyone. Uh, to my knowledge, is it will not be broadcast uh, due to the lack of Wi-Fi on the campus. So uh, if you can go, I really, really want to encourage you to go be there. Uh, it's going to be a, a great, great night of Bible preaching, just, just diving deep, deep, deep in the Word. Uh, and y'all are in for a treat, treat. Man, oh man, oh man. Uh, Brother David Young, the the pastor at Grace Baptist Church in West Memphis is uh, is going to be one of the two speakers tonight. And let me just tell you something. I love Brother David. He is a very good buddy of mine, and I like to hear that, that joker preach. And so I am ready, ready, ready to hear Brother David. And then that other guy that's on the ticket tonight, well, y'all just got to put up with me. Y'all hear him all the time. And so uh, I will be the other speaker tonight at the Bible conference. And so 
Uh, if you'll just give me just a quick second, I need to uh, do something that's on here. And so uh, we are going to take care of that right quick. Uh, so if you can join me tonight, man, 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 I want you to do that. God has given us a, uh, a great word and uh, we are ready, rocking and rolling to come in here and to have a good time tonight. Uh, all I can say is, is that I'm going to be coming in hot tonight. And so I am ready to go. I'm ready to preach. And so, uh, I've got, I was up to, let's see, Denise, what did I tell you? Uh, I was up till almost two o'clock this morning in sermon prep. I mean, I was in it. I mean, in it. And so, uh, we had a good time. We had a good time studying. It was intense and and uh, to be real honest with you, I probably could have went a couple more hours, but I knew I needed to get to, <laughs> I knew I needed to get some sleep because I needed to be wide awake here when I got in, got into the live. And so, uh, I, I tried to lay down a little bit and, uh, that is it, but I'm going to spend the rest of the day. I'm going to fine tune that message and get ready to go. Miss Denise will be there. Uh, once again, that is at the Tri-County Campgrounds, uh, at the Worship Center. It is just on the outside of Wynn, and if you can make it, I would love to see you there, to come in and just to dive deeper into God's Word with me, because it is going to be fun. I have got some issues with my computer, and I have a feeling that it is because of this storm that is rolling through because it is coming down. The rain is falling here in the Delta. And for those of you north of me, if you have not got the, if you have not got the, uh, the, the storms yet, let me just tell you something. It's coming because it is raining like cats and dogs. I mean, raining. Y'all know what I'm saying. It is raining like cats and dogs. So, uh, Man, oh man, you you just got to you just got to know that it is coming your way, coming your way. All right, let's see here. Uh, looks like Alan Senior, Alan Weddington Senior is here. Good morning, sir. So glad you're hanging out with us. So glad you're here. Okay. I think that we have got everything that is uh, going to be part of our scheduling. If I've missed anything, y'all say something. I mean, you know, oh, I do know. I do know there's something else I need to uh, I need to uh, uh, get in front of you guys. And that is uh, uh, the July 4th is on a Sunday. July the 4th is on Sunday. And I know that's going to be a big weekend for everybody. Pretty much everybody's going to be up on Monday, the whole thing. Uh, we're wanting to do an outside outdoor service at Ridgewood. But uh, it's looking like we're going to have the majority of our congregation is going to be gone. And so uh, I, I need to know if you are planning on being at the campus on July the 4th. So if you are, then if you would, please, please, please uh, let me know so that we can kind of get you on the list. And this is, not, uh, this is not holding you to anything, okay? This is just trying to give me an idea of planning so that uh, we can... Uh, you know, kind of figure out some things, what we're going to do, uh, so on and so forth. So if you would do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Guys, 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 take your Bible. Excuse me. Take your Bibles. First Samuel chapter 28. We crack open a new chapter today. First Samuel 28. First Samuel 28. Now, when we left last week, do you remember what all was going on? Okay. Do you remember where we were? Do you remember what took place? We know that David and his men and their families and everything had moved into the land of the Philistines. All right? Now, if you remember where we are, I want you to hit that thumbs up button or hit that heart button. Let me know. Everybody's on the same page here. Okay? We ended chapter 27. We know that David was going out with his men. They were living, they, were, they had been given the city of Ziklag by uh, Ashish, the king of Gath. So that's where David and them had moved into. So I'm like I said, if you're with me on the same page, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Let me know. Uh, and then they were going out uh, and they were attacking the enemies of Israel. 
Okay, I mean, they were tearing them up. We know that that they went out back in chapter 27, verse 8. They had raided the, the Jeshurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites, okay? Those are the... Uh, th- those are the old time enemies of Israel. And so David and his people were going out, okay? But the thing we needed to understand was that he was going out and doing this without God's direction, okay? God did not tell him to do that. God did not say, this is what I need you to do. He just took it upon himself to go do that. And then at the same time, he was telling Ashish, the king of Gath, that what he was doing was not what he actually was doing, but that instead that he was going and that he was uh, putting the raids on Israel itself. And so uh, a big lie here. So not only not only was David doing something wrong to begin with, but then he was lying about it on the back side. So, so he was up to his eyeballs. I'm talking up to his eyeballs in a hot mess. And so when we get here to chapter 28, okay, the lie is about to come back to bite him in his backside. And so what I want you to do is we're going to look at verses one and two, just two verses, because we're going to set the stage for what's coming. Now, when we read verses one and two, I want us to understand that it is actually tied to the end of 27. And so if you're ever studying this, you're going to find that uh, most of your thought patterns come from the end of chapter 27. It's all tied together. So verse 28, excuse me, verse one, chapter 28. Now it happened in those days, now we we need to remember that what we're talking about in those days is that year and four months that David and his men and their families stayed in Ziklag. We saw that back in chapter 27, verse 7. So in this 16-month window, now it happened in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war. So Ashish is calling the boys together. Okay, you see that? He's calling everybody together and he is about to go to war. Okay, but now to fight with Israel. What's David going to do? Ashish is going after David's homeland. So what's he going to do? He had already lied to Ashish, telling him that that he had raided and indeed killed the people of Israel. Now, David is going to be forced to live that lie because he's going after David. Okay, look here. And Ashish said to David, you assuredly know that you will go out with me to battle, you and your men. In other words, you know you're going to go out with me. I've protected you. I've protected you from Saul because Saul and all of his men wanted to come to you and they wanted to kill you. They sought after you, but you have sought refuge here. You and your men and your families. I've given you your own community. Now, it's payback. You know that you will go out and not just know, but you assuredly know that you will go out with me to battle, you and your men. Now look, Here, okay? Look at David's response. Verse two. So David said to Ashish, surely you know what your servant can do. Okay. At this moment, David David seems, okay, completely given in, completely surrendered, if you will, to the leadings of this ungodly man, Ashish. Okay, he is. He will fight with the Philistines and he will fight with them against Israel. Okay. At this point, David is in an extremely low, low place. 
He had gone about as far away from God and God's leadership as you can ever imagine. Okay. Now we can probably understand what God or what David is doing. Okay. We can almost justify it. You know, the problem with us today is that we want to justify the things that we do wrong. Have y'all ever noticed that? In other words, we'll do something really stupid, but yet we want to justify it. That's just, that's the nature of the human flesh. Look here. So David said to she, surely you know what your servant can do. And she said to David, therefore, I will make you one of my chief, chief guardians forever. In other words, I'm going to make you one of the main commanders in my army. You see that? So David has just been elevated in the enemy camp against his home people. It's not a good look for David. How many times have you heard the term backslide or backslidden? And they just, just chew on that term for just a minute backslide or backslidden. Here's what we come to define that as. That is when a Christian, and we know they are a Christian, okay? I mean, they've walked the talk, so to speak. But then they've got off track and they've run from God. And it could be for one reason or another. We just don't know why. Okay. Something might have happened that forced them away. They might have, uh, you know, they might have made a critical mistake and just thought they could never go back to following Christ. Or, uh, you know, they might have got mad at church. You know, something happened at church. They got mad, got their feelings hurt, and they just started running away. And they, instead of running to God, they run into a life of sin. And they were so far off the Christian walk that it's very easy to say the way you're acting is definitely not Christian. Are you even saved in the first place? And, and we're not passing judgment here, okay? This is not what this is about. It's just that this is somebody, this is a brother or sister that you know for a fact. I mean, they, they, they were the real deal. But something happened. It might have been a tragedy in life. Something tragic could have happened to them. It, it, the reasoning is irrelevant. The fact of the matter is, is that they are no longer walking with God. They are walking apart from God. And we use that term backslide, or they are backslidden. Okay. David, in this text, is about as backslidden as you can get. Okay. Because we know David has a heart for God. We know that. We know that he is God's appointed man. Okay? He's going to be the next king of Israel. We know that. God don't make mistakes. And that's the thing we have to understand. No matter what's going on in your life right now, God has allowed it to happen. And God never makes a mistake. Okay? If, if we say that what's going on in our life is wrong, then that means that we're saying God is wrong and God is never wrong. And so you've got a man after God's own heart, the very next hand-picked anointed king of Israel is going about as far away from God as you can imagine. Now, how many of us have been in those shoes? To where we got, we had our business taken care of with God. We accepted Christ. I mean, we we we're the real deal here. But something happened, and we went away from God. Backslide. I would say that if we're all honest, many of us have. Many of us watching right now. Many of you who will watch the replay of this, and and this is not to call us out. This is just to say we're human, okay? This is just to say we're human. The thing is, is that 
when we get in those states, okay, we want to justify everything we do. We want to justify our sin. We want to justify our sin nature. We want to justify the fleshly decisions that we make. That's not of God. It is just not of God. And, and right now, even where we are, even though uh, we are walking with Christ right now, this is where we are in our life. No, we're walking with Christ. We can't fall susceptible to attempting to justify our actions. Amen. We have to stop that. We have to own up to our actions. We are accountable for our actions. And we need to own those things. David is in a hot mess. And he is about to have to really live a very ungodly lie. And it's not going to be pretty. We're going to pick the story back up tomorrow morning, Lord willing, in verse number three. Guys, thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. I pray that you have an incredible Monday. I pray that God speaks to you through the, the calmness of this rain today. I pray your coffee is hot. I pray it is strong. And I pray that this day you get extra moments of prayer, that you get extra moments in God's Word. If you would, please pray for me. Please pray for Brother David Young as we uh, put the coat and tie on our messages for tonight. Pray that God will use us as messengers of his word. Pray that we will speak with courage, that we will speak with boldness, and that we will speak with love. Pray that God will protect us this day as we seek to stay so focused. And as a, as a preacher, I'll, I'll use some preacher terms for you. Okay. Before I preach, I have a routine that I do it's every time, whether it's a Sunday morning, a Sunday night, a Wednesday night, or any night during the week, I have a routine. And if that routine seems broken and gets out of place, then there, there's, there's a cog in the wheel up here that doesn't work right. And so I have to make sure that I stay, that I stay focused. Pray that routine stays intact for me. Pray the, the target never gets out of focus. Okay. Pray that God's will be done. Pray that the place will be packed tonight. Pray that there is standing room only in the worship center tonight on the campgrounds because people are coming from everywhere. They're coming from all over Tri-County. I do hope you can come. And if you can't, pray like mad. No kidding. If you can't come, if you can't make it, I understand. Then I'm just going to ask you that at 6.30 tonight, you commit to a season of prayer that God will just show up and show smack out on the campground. I certainly would appreciate that. Guys, I love y'all so much. If you need anything, I want to encourage you to reach out to me. I will be here. You can call me. You can message me. You can email me at ridgewoodpastor at gmail.com. You can call, reach out, or, or message, or you can uh, email Gloria. And that is at secretary at ridgewoodbaptistar.org. If you do happen to be out today... Please dress accordingly, dress appropriately, and please be careful because the roads are wet and the roads will be a little bit slick. And if you do see anybody today, anybody, tell them all about Jesus. I'm out of here, guys. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye, guys.